So I think this story is something that's going to play out for some time. Good to have you back with us on Ed Schultz News and Commentary on this Friday edition. What is going to happen in the House? Are the conservatives going to hold their ground? Are they going to force the way they want the House run? Is it going to remain in disarray? Is there anybody out there that can put it all together? Uh, I, I don't know. And this is very intriguing as to how this is going to play out. So some insights this day from Richard Vigory, who's been around the conservative movement for some 50 years. He's the godfather of the conservative movement, as I say. He's the chairman of conservativehq.com. Mr. Vigory, always a pleasure. Good to have you with us. Good to be with you again, Ed. Give me a description. What's happening here in the House? Well, what, what's happening, Ed, uh, it's, it's relatively simple. There's a, a disconnect between establishment Republicans and the grassroots. Uh, the Bible tells us, Lincoln told us, a house divided cannot stand. And today the Republican Party is a house divided between the national Republican leaders uh, and the grassroots. So just a disconnect. About 70 percent of the, uh, the voters are at the grassroots, 30 so percent kind of the establishment, uh, what we call country club Republicans. And uh, we're like the biblical Jews who had to wander through the desert for 40 years mm -hmm. until that generation of failed, flawed leaders had passed from the scene. And conservatives are not going to get to the political promised land until we get new leaders. Okay. The Demo Let so me just say, the Democratic Party is, is ideologically uh, consistently liberal. The Republican Party is not ideologically consistently conservative. So do the conservatives uh, in your, uh, looking into your crystal ball, do they hold their ground here? Is this their chance to move the party in their direction even yeah. further? What do you no, think? No, absolutely. They, they will hold their ground here, and there will have to be accommodations. You cannot just dis, uh, dis and just uh, ignore the base of the party. Uh, okay. You just can't do that. And, you, you know, if a house divided cannot stand. And if they want to win in 2016, they've got to figure out how they can unite the party. And it's not united now. Yesterday at the press conference, McCarthy said that his comments about Benghazi and the special committee may have uh, had an impact on this. Here's his response to the question. How much did the, your comments about Benghazi last week, we play into your decision to step aside today? Well, that wasn't helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I could have said it much better. But this Benghazi committee was only created for one purpose, to find the truth on behalf of the families for the four dead Americans. I Mr. Vickery, was that just a situation he couldn't mop up? Well, absolutely. You know, it uh, it was a stupid statement. It was wrong, and uh, there was just no pulling it back. Uh, but you know, it it was more than that. That may have been uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. But you know, the the Freedom Caucus, and then there's a Liberty Caucus as well in the House, and they have enough votes to uh, deny him the 218 he needed. And if uh, he had uh, won the election that was scheduled for yesterday. He would have been done so uh, without receiving 218 votes. And that means uh, when the election was held by the whole House in late October, that he would have had to get votes from uh, Nancy Pelosi, which would make Nancy co-speaker. And that was just unacceptable to him uh, and to, uh, to the other Republican leaders. Paul Ryan, is he the next speaker? You know, he could very well be. Uh, I don't know if uh, Paul can uh, unite the uh, the party. You got to. You can't just continue to have nothing but big government established Republicans in the leadership. And uh, if Paul's the next uh, speaker, he's going to have to deal with bringing conservatives who represent the grassroots into the leadership. Failing that, there will continue to be turmoil in the Republican House. Okay. Let's talk national politics. I, I just get this sense that no one in the Republican Party wants Trump to be where he is right now, out in front of the rest of the candidates, that he has tapped into some kind of a grassroots effort of his own, a populist tone. He's even standing with the Democrats on trade. He has the same position on trade as Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton now. And the kind of vernacular and barb throwing that's going back and forth was on display yesterday in Las Vegas when he had this to say about Carly Fiorina. Then I attacked Carly's record because her record running a business is a disaster. But she's got that good pitter-patter, like a machine gun. But I said, if you listen for 10 minutes, you get a headache. You get a headache. Boy, the press loves her. They love her. 
I see these polls where I'm at 29, she's at six, and they're saying, here's the headline, Carly is surging. I'm at 29. <laughs> surging. Mr. Vigory, how do you digest that? Well, well, well you know, yes, you're, you're right, Ed, that the... Uh, a high percent of uh, conservative Republican leaders uh, are concerned about Trump. They don't want Trump to, to be the nominee. But, you know, forget Trump. He's not the problem. The problem is the failed uh, Republican leaders who do not fight. And the people are looking for a, for a nominee as well as a House leader and a Senate leader that will fight. We're looking for somebody that's going to fight for our issues as strongly and effectively as Nancy Pelosi fights for the Democrat uh, views and values, and uh, Harry Reid does. So uh, Trump is uh, expressing the anger that the grassroots feels, uh, and if you want to, uh, you know, reduce Trump's uh, support, deal with his issues, start going after the Republican leaders, start prov providing leadership for our views, and Trump's support will dissipate. Your thoughts on Hillary Clinton shifting on the Trans-Pacific Partnership after being Secretary of State supporting it, giving speeches supporting it, and openly, openly, uh, openly on record uh, over 40 times supporting it. Now she has reservations. Now she yeah. doesn't like it. What, what do you well, make of that? Of course, she's running for president. She's also looking in her rearview mirror, and she sees Joe Biden there. And Biden can only run for president as uh, Barack Obama's third term. And uh, so she's trying to figure out how to differentiate herself from uh, Obama and from Joe Biden. Her So, you uh, her th so that, that's, a, that's, that's a great point. Not to interrupt you, but I, I just want to make this clear. You think that it was more of a Biden factor for Hillary to make this move than it was a Sanders factor? Uh, absolutely. I don't think she sees Sanders as her in, uh, comp main competition. It's going to be Joe Biden. So just like Obama got the nomination primarily by distinguishing himself from uh, Hillary on the uh, Iraq vote. And, uh, you know, that's the vote that uh, caused him to get the nomination. So she wants to make sure she, uh, Biden doesn't get to, uh, to the left of her. Mr. Vigory, always a pleasure. Good to get your insight and take on this. Thanks so much. My we'll pleasure. do it again. Bye, buddy. You bet. The chairman of um, conservative quarterly, uh, conservativehq.com, and a man who's been around the conservative movement a long time. Very refined gentleman and uh, has different views, certainly from mine, but uh, we have good communication and I respect it. This is Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Hope you have a great weekend. We're off to pheasant hunting. Back with you on Monday.